producer, host, and sponsors. Go! Denny Smith with Bob O'Brien. WPAT New York. Denny Smith with Bob O'Brien. WPAT New York. Bob O'Brien, Gene Cornish is right here right now. We're going to play some great music from the Rascals right here at WPAT. Then over to Gene Cornish at PAT Radio. Denny Smith with Bob O'Brien. WPAT New York. Denny Smith with Bob O'Brien. WPAT New York. What else do I have to say? I don't have to say anything more except... Uh, oh, no, thank you, yes. Yes, well, it's nice, Gene, to be a uh, part it's of... It's your the... show. It's your show, I can say. Teddy <laughs> Smith! Yeah, well... I don't speak Spanish. What am I doing here? Well, you know what? The most important thing is, Gene, that you're here right now, and the most important thing is you're a moment of history, history upon us as we speak. Oh, don't say that. And well, not only, not only historical aspect of... And we want to discuss parts of uh, the rascals in your life, of course, but you've done this uh, whole routine in Spanish, English, Italian, and other other languages as well. Is that correct? I, I, I don't know. Uh, not yet. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, uh, we actually recorded Groovin' in Spanish. We sold about 10,000 copies in New York alone, you know. The total number of records that the rascals sold was about 85 million. You know what? I, would, I wouldn't venture to say because then somebody would have to pay us. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. <laughs> I was told anywhere between uh, 60 and 90 million copies, but uh, I don't know. Some of them are bootlegged. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a good way uh, to, to uh, start off the show. By the way, uh, we're going to probably have some uh, interesting people calling in, I'm sure, within an hour's time. I was going to call at 710. Well, we have a very, very special person. I uh, will sort of uh, make it a little bit of a surprise to the audience, but then again, his, his name begins with the letter J and then ends with the letter R. Uh, or at the beginning of the last name begins with the letter R. Anything you'd like to tell us about yourself or about the Rascals or what that anyone probably doesn't know already? Well, I'm five foot eleven. I have blue eyes. I'm a man. No. <laughs> I'm, uh, I had the fortunate, uh, blessed life to be in the Rascals. You know, Felix and uh, Felix Cavallari and Dina Bugatti were dreaming about having a band together in Las Vegas, and uh, uh, Felix's motto was, uh, "The next big band could come out of New York, and we could be it." And he. Uh, I met I met Felix about the same time I met Eddie Bugatti, and David Bugatti uh, 
I had joined Joey Dean the Starlighters, and Joey was putting together a comeback band. And David was sort of like, uh, wanted to stay on the sidelines for a while, so Eddie, Eddie's brother took over, which was his, his younger brother. And Larry Venere and Joey D and myself and Felix and a drummer named Ricky Shannon. And, uh, uh, we, we played, we started playing together and from the first day Felix said, we got to start a band. I said, I just got <laughs> in, I just got in one of my superstars. Uh, I mean, when, when I was in high school, I was playing uh, uh, the Peppermint Twist. So uh, the, the first rock star I ever truly met was David Bugatti, you know, and, uh, and I remember <laughs> my band was playing at the Peppermint Lounge and they said, it was a four-piece band, and we didn't have a front man like everybody did. So they said, "You got to get a front man." I had the audacity at uh, at 20 years old to ask David Bugatti if he'd like to join my band, and he was so. so what did he say? He was. He get the. No, he, oh, no, no. no. Yeah. He, he, he said he was very gracious. I never. He said, you know, he said I like your band a lot. He did like my band. He suggested us for Joy's Club, uh, and, and, and he was always a big booster of mine. And he said, uh, I'm kind of like a little toasted right now with bands, but thank you. So he, he, he said that he was very flattered and honored there. And we became friends, and of course, David later on, uh, from grooving on, sang the backgrounds with, with the Rascals, and it was very, very big, intricate part of the Rascals' records. Any particular, of all the great hits that you've done, any particular one that you like the most, or out of, out of all of them? That well, you know, of that, that's, that's really hard to say, because they're such classic records. I mean, Felix Cavalier and Eddie Bugatti, uh, we were blessed with these two guys writing the great songs, and they were in the zone at the time. Felix would come up with a, with, a, with a musical idea, and then Eddie would just embellish it with the greatest lyrics, and then, of course, uh, the four of us would make those records together. It, was, it, wasn't, it wasn't like one guy's the leader, you know, and uh, we produced ourselves, and we were introduced to a, a young Turk from Turkey named uh, Arif Martin, who was basically at the House of Ranger, and he was... Uh, a family friend of Ahmed Erdogan's, and the, he and Tom, the great Tommy Dowd became our referees at the time. We were allowed to produce ourselves, and basically the only two guys who ever really had, well, everybody had been in the studio individually, but the, to make actual records, myself and Felix, I guess, made a, I had made an album with a group called The Unbeatables. I had a song called I Want to Be a Beetle. And, and what year was that? 1964. So when I came to New York playing at the Putman Lounge, and that's where I met uh, Eddie and, and David and Felix. I didn't meet uh, uh, Dino until Dino was still in Vegas when we, when we met. And uh, I remember Felix uh, telling me that he called Dino and said, I got the guitar player, get your butt back here. And uh, uh, I, I was reluctant to actually be in, in the Rascals. I was sort of a tire, tired of these New York Italian guys, you know. <laughs> I, I'm not, I've been kind of wrecked over the coals by Joey D, which was, you know, we were young and we were, we were all so headstrong. And we had some, we had some financial... Uh, Disagreements and uh, that's not unusual in the music. Well, I, I, was, I was I was dating I was dating a young woman named uh, Vicky Bruno, who was in a group called the uh, the Red Dolls, and they had a minor hit record. And uh, her her family was kind of like supporting me and feeding me and housing me. And uh, and I said I don't know if I want to. I think I want to go home and get my laundry done and get a hot meal up in Rochester, New York. But they knew better. They said you go to this or you're not going to come in this house again. And I went to the first Rascal rehearsal. We learned 26 songs, and I came back with a smile like Sar Dr. Sardonicus, which I still have to this day. Well, you know, what's unique about you guys, and especially you, is you're so active now, and especially you're getting uh, another Hall of Fame award in Rochester. Tell us about well, that. Well, I grew up in Rochester, New York. I was born in Ottawa, Canada, and uh, a fairy tale meeting is my, my uh, biological father had sort of like uh, uh, split town, and he, he left us uh, on a farm, and these people took his mom and I and my grandmother in. I was two years old, three years old, and by the time... Uh, I was uh, at four, uh, four years old. We lived in a little cottage. They owned these three little cottages at the, at the foot of the mountain on a lake, and there was about 800 lakes. And the great Lord, the Lord Almighty, sent this man from Rochester, New York, uh, 350 miles to rent the cottage next door. He was single, and uh, he fell in love with my mother. And uh, they, they communicated by letters for two months and came to get us. And I remember I was four years old. And my mother woke me up at 5 o'clock in the morning on the lake, and it was fog on the lake, and she dressed me all up. I said, where are we going? And I saw a rowboat coming, and she said, uh, somebody's coming to change our lives. <laughs> Amazing story. Yeah. Wow, take this down. A moment of history right here. Teddy Smith, we're going to play some great music. When we come back with Gene Cornish right here, Teddy Smith with Bob O'Brien right here at WPAT. Who's that, Teddy Smith? I forgot. I think that's the guy. Teddy Smith is here, right? Is that the guy Peter Bennett mentioned? Yeah, or, uh, no, somebody? No, no. Oh, okay. Anyway, we're going to play some great music like this one. How about this one?
for hey Gene, this one is for you. Thank you. Sandy and everybody else. And Ralph. And Ralph, yes. Right here. Right here. Oh yeah. I'm watching you, you're so it's so refreshing, you're old school, you're doing everything yourself here. Yeah, I mean, we're so, it's fun that way. spinning real records on your spinning Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw the turntables, it's 45 to 30 years. Come on, let's do everything we can. Probably not Jean, this is like being right now. How are you, Barry? Uh, I can't at the moment. We can try at 7.30 because we have Joey Reynolds calling right now. Joey, here's our Joey. At 7.10? Sure, I will. Thank you. Are you calling it at 7.10? <laughs> 